welcome to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers. Focusing on God's Word illuminates the Word of God by explaining the Scriptures and conducting word studies using Scripture to support Scripture in the revelation of His Word. Matthew 11.15 said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. As he ministered to us today, here now is Pastor Everton Jeffers. Today I want to take this opportunity one more time to welcome you to focusing on God's Word. And I'd like to also take the opportunity this morning to thank the sponsors of this, pro of this program for their valuable contribution. I want you to know without you this would not have been possible. And so I want to take this opportunity to say to you today, thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to say a special good morning to all the members of the Deeper Life Full Gospel Ministries, whether you're here in Antigua, in the United States, in the UK, wherever you are, I want to take this opportunity to say a special welcome to you and thank you for viewing. Today I want to speak on a topic that I recognize that even though we are Christians, we tend to miss out on. A lot of times we sing songs and we become attached to the lyrics and the music and in actual fact we are not in tune with what the words of the song is actually saying. And there is this particular song that meant a lot to me and still means a lot to me and as I listen to it more and more, it dawned on me actually, when I sing it, what I'm actually saying. I want to share it with you this morning, using a biblical background to show you where it actually might have came from, or a biblical scripture, let's put it this way, that supports the actual context of the song and that is God is way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness you see we sing this song and for a lot of us the lyrics are catching it sounds nice the music is suiting it gets our emotion but do you know for a fact that God is way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. This morning I'm going to show you that he is and will continue to be a way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker, light in the darkness. Sometimes we turn to people and we put our promises in them. We put our faith in them. And many a times they fail us because some of the things that we want them to do is beyond them. I can stand here this morning and based on scripture say to you that God is all of these. In the book of Exodus, it started in chapter 13, but the base of the message this morning is gonna be coming from Exodus chapter 14 when God led the children of Israel out of Egypt he did something that many would find very difficult to cope with to understand but sometimes we need to tell ourselves that we are not God and where we can't trace God we just need to simply trust in him. I want to say that when we look at these verses this morning, we're going to see something of significance and our view of the song will change at the end of this particular message. If God is going to be our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. There are a number of things that we have to know 
that we have to see, that we have to learn, and we're going to learn them this morning as we look into God's word. We must understand these few things in order for us to recognize that God is a way maker. If God is going to be a way maker, then God must be allowed to lead. In Exodus chapter 13, reading from verse 17, this is what it said. So it happened when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistine, even though it was nearer. I want you to notice who was leading. If God is going to become our way maker, God must first lead. You notice the Egyptian released them. And God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines, even though it was nearer. For God said the people might change their minds when they see war, that is, that there will be war, and return to Egypt. With God, he does not always use the shortest route. But one thing I can tell you, the route that he uses is the route that will bring glory to him. Can you imagine that there was a closer route? But God says, no, I'm not going to take you through the closest route. I'm going to take you through the most difficult route. And that is simply not for the sake of the children of Israel alone, but so that God himself can get the glory. For some of us, we are wondering why is God taking us through this route? Why is it that I'm going through such a difficult times? Why is it that nothing appears to be coming easy for me? This is what I want to say to you. But God knows if he ever used the other route, which is closer, some of us might turn back when we see what lies ahead. God is smarter than us. God is all-knowing. And I want you to know this clearly today. If God knows that taking you the shorter route is going to cause you to turn back, he will never take you to the shortest route. He will take you to the most difficult route. Remember, when God is leading, it's not about you. It's about him. When God is leading, it's not about you getting praise, but he getting the glory. And so that's why if God is going to be your way maker, he has to lead. And whatever route he directs us to, that's the route we need to follow. If God is going to be way maker, when you find yourself in the situation, you must call on him. Believe you me. The only reason why you will need a way maker is because you're at a dead end. And when you're at a dead end, it's a dead end because nobody else can help you. And so if God is going to become your way maker, when you get to your dead end, the only person that you can call upon that can actually help you is going to be God. In chapter 14 and verse 10, this is what it says. As Pharaoh approached, remember, Pharaoh had released them for them to go in chapter 13. In 14, having released them, Pharaoh now began to approach them. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and saw the Egyptian marching after them. And they were frightened. Of course, I would have been frightened too. They were frightened. And so the Israelites cried out to the Lord. Notice, they never cried out to Moses. They cried out to the Lord. They recognized that in order for them to actually overcome what is presently before them, they could not call to Moses because Moses cannot help. And so they called to the only person who can help, and that is Almighty God. Some of you are in some situations today and you are calling out to, for man to help. You're calling out for family for, for help. You're calling to different people. You're even calling government for help. Let me tell you, your situation does not need human intervention. It needs divine intervention. 
That's why you need to find a way maker, and that way maker is Jesus Christ. For God to be our way maker, our leader must not be afraid in the situation, but they must exercise faith. There are too many of us as leaders, when tough time comes, we, we, we become afraid, we become frightened, and we try to uh, determine whether we should stay or whether we should leave. When tough situation comes, the true leader usually stands up and make decision based on the direction given by God. If God is going to become our way maker, our leader must not be afraid in the situation, but must have faith. Now, when we look at verse 13 of chapter 14, the Bible said, Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Now, this is significant, because Moses didn't just stop and say, and see what he's going to do. But he says, see what he is going to do for you today. Today, God is going to do something for one of you that are watching this program. And it's going to be significant. You are going to prove God to truly be a way maker. Look at what happened. For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, watch this. You will never see again. Always remember this. As way maker, when God removed them, they will not bother you anymore. Some of you are where you are today. Your situation is of such that you recognize that nobody else can help you. I don't know your situation, but God knows. God is saying, call out to me. I can be your way maker this morning. And notice what, the, what Moses said to them. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which means stand still and see how God is going to deliver you today. And the big part about this is this. When God deliver you from your dead end situation, what caused you to be in the dead end, you will not see it again anymore. Or if you do see it, it will not bother you again. Because God does not do partial deliverance. God does total deliverance. And so when he delivered the children of Israel from those Egyptians, that was the end of the Egyptian in terms of the Israelites. And that's why Moses says, those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. Some of you might be hooked on drugs. Some of you might be hooked on something else. When God deliver you from your present bondage, from your impossible situation, I want you to know this. That situation, you will see it again, but it will not affect you anymore. Once you call on God, God will truly become your, your way maker. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. Because that's who he is, way maker. That song is not just a song, it's a message. And when we look at the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, it is so significant to note why that song should be so significant to the believers today. It says, the Lord, verse 14, will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. When God is about to demonstrate that he's a way maker, he must first have a faith leader. That is who Moses was back then. Your pastor, if he's truly a leader, must be a faith leader. He must have confidence in what God is saying to him. If he does not, it makes no sense whatsoever that he's leading you. Because regardless of what he thinks, tough times are going to come. And sometimes, dead-end situation will come. The only person that he can turn to and can exercise faith in is Jesus Christ. And so we see there... That Moses said that, listen, those people that you see today, don't worry about them. That situation that is affecting you, that you've been trying to get over. Today, when you call on Jesus, 
you will see, you might see it again, but it's not going to affect you anymore. Yes, I'm speaking to you that are watching right now at this moment. You are in that dead end situation. You have been praying. You have been going to the doctors. You have been going to counselors and all the different things. God is about to make a way for you. Then he leads the people to a dead end. God cannot prove he's a way maker except there's a dead end situation. You know, it's very funny that we tend to forget that in order to prove God in terms of who he say he is, we must have difficult situations in our lives. God wanted the Israelite to see that he is God. He's the infinite God. And so guess what he did? He led them to a situation that only he alone can deliver them from it. God can only prove he's a way maker if he could deliver from dead end situation. In verse 15, the Lord said to Moses, when Moses started to cry out to him, now I would cry out too, and the children of Israel were really in a situation where they needed to cry out because this is what was happening and God deliberately set it up so that they will know that he is a way maker on the right of the Israelites was were mountains on the left of the Israelites were mountains on the back of the Israelites were the Egyptian and in the front of the Israelites were the Red Sea. Tell me, you, you, you want anything more dead end than this? This is what you call dead end. This is what you call impossible and impassable situation. It's impossible. How do you pass a Red Sea? But God led them to the Red Sea, led them to the dead end to prove to them that even in impossible situation, he can make a way. And so this is what he said in verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the sons of Israel to move forward towards the sea. Come on, God. Really? This is a dead end. That is exactly where God wants us. Some of us, until we get to dead ends, we will never recognize God. When God leads you to a dead end, whether you're saved or not, it's a good place to be because God is about to prove to you his love and his ability to make a way when there's impossibility in human speaking or where you cannot pass. Watch this. When God places us in an impossible situation or impossible if you want to use that one is impossible in that you, you can't pass it or impossible which means that there's no way that you can get around it what we need to recognize as leaders is this the leader should not see exactly like the people but he should see what God is showing him now when the children of Israel look back, they saw the Egyptian army. When they look right, they saw the mountains. When they look left, they saw the mountain. When they look in front of them, they saw the Red Sea. Do you know what their intention was? They told Moses, I told you, leave us in Egypt. It's better we have turned back and served the children of um, Egypt. Now you bring us out here to die. Don't care how bad the situation is. God never late. God always arrive on time. But I say that for you to see the importance of the leader not seen like the people. You notice when they saw the impossibility of what lies before them. Listen to Moses. Don't worry. You just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Can you, can you imagine Moses seeing the same thing that they seen with his natural eyes and not have a spiritual vision 
Moses would have been complaining the same way like them. God says, Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell them head towards the sea. Obviously, the people thought that we're going to be drowned or killed. But Moses, the man of God, saw something completely different because he's in tune with God. The leaders of the church must be in tune with God. And even when God tells us that, listen, this is what is going to happen. And we look around naturally those eyes and see that this would not happen naturally. We need to believe God more than believe the people. A lot of times we mess up because we don't listen to God. We listen to the people. We need to understand when God calls us, we can't see like the people. We need to see exactly what God is showing us. In order to be a way maker, we have to obey God regardless of how ridiculous the instructions may seem. Now I focus on Jericho when God told the children of Israel march around Jericho and most of us would have said stupid idea. You know what God is looking for? Not for us to do anything, just simply to obey what he tells us to do. Now look at this. The Egyptians are at the back or the rear if you want to use that. Mountains on the right, mountains on the left and the Red Sea in front. And God says, Moses, why are you calling out to me? Tell them, I say, go forward. Forward still is Jehovah's will. And guess what the order was for Moses to go forward? In order to cross the sea on dry ground, Moses must raise his rod. Come on, God. Really? What? Would a small rod do with a massive sea? You see, the rod in Moses' hand spoke, spoke to God's authority. That rod was God's authority. And so when God told Moses to raise that rod, what God was actually saying to Moses Raise your authority. Use the authority that I've given to you. Many pastors have the authority of God, but we're not using it. When God says, Moses, go forward and raise the rod, he's saying, go forward and use my authority. If we're going to see God become a way maker in our lives, when God tells us to do something, don't care how ridiculous it seems, do it. That is how you're going to see God coming true for you as a way maker. And that is what Moses did. Moses went and he went forward and God told him, raise the rod, raise my authority. In verse 16, lift up your staff, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the sons of Israel may go through the middle of the sea on dry land. Oh my goodness. Look at the demonstration here. In this verse, in verse 16, God is proving two things here. He's proving that one, he's a, ma a way maker. Two, he's a promise keeper. And as a matter of fact, let me put the third in. Because in order for him to part the Red Sea, it takes a miracle. So in verse 16, we see God saying, listen, I am going to make a way through the sea. I am promising you that you're going to go through on dry ground. So he's a way maker. He's making a promise that they're going to go through on dry ground. And then he also says, listen, you're going to go through on dry land. Now you think about that. He made a way. He promised them and he's about to perform the miracle of all miracles. No one else have ever done that and no one else on planet earth will ever do anything else like that in their entire life. God was proven to the children of Israel that he's a way maker, miracle worker, 
promise keeper in verse 16 he says just lift up your rod stretch out your hand so that the sons of Israel may go to the middle of the sea on dry land can you imagine the sea parted and immediately the sea parted the ground immediately became dry only a miracle could have done that God is truly a way maker miracle worker and when he promised something his intention is to make sure that he bring it to pass and so we see that here in verse 16 that God is a promise keeper he's a way maker and he's a miracle worker now in verse 20 we see the fourth part of the song his light in the darkness my God that is who you are in verse 20 we see again the miracle working of God the power of God God being the promise keeper and not only that but the way maker that he promised the children of Israel that he was going to be and so what God did was that he used to lead the children of Israel in a pillar of cloud of day and a pillar of fire by night when the Egyptians began getting closer to the children of Israel God did something that only God alone can do here again he's demonstrating that he's a miracle worker and he's a promise keeper he says I will not leave you and this is one of the promises that we're going to look at later as we dive into the study. Listen to what it says in verse 20. It says, so it came between, that is the, 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 the light, so it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud along with darkness, even by day to the Egyptians. Light in the darkness, watch this. To the Egyptians, when God came between the Egyptians and the Israelite, everything for the Egyptian were dark. The day were dark, the nights were dark. But for the Israelite, watch the difference. Watch how God is a light in the darkness. But it gave light by night to the Israelite. So one army did not come near the other all night. For those who are not walking with God, they were not able to see. But we will be able to see even in our darkest situation because God is the one who is guiding us. Watch this. God provides darkness so that they cannot see or move. Those persons who are in darkness and want to harm us, listen, listen to what God did. He provides darkness so they cannot see and they cannot move. But watch what he did for the children of Israel. While he provided light for his children so they can see and so that they can move. That's the delay for the children of Israel to go to the Red Sea. God is our light. In this world of darkness, they can't see. But God showing us as his children the light. We are seeing what they can't see. And so when we talk to them, no wonder sometimes they're puzzled and wonder, wait, these people are crazy. They can't see what God is showing us because God is light. The, is, the Egyptians could not see because God came between and to them the day was dark and the night was dark. But to the Israelite, the day was light and the night was light, which is what God does for his children. He's a light in the darkness where other people would have given up God's children don't give up because God showed them the light in John chapter 1 verse 9 this is what it says there it was the true light the genuine perfect steadfast light which coming into the world enlightens everyone which simply mean when Christ came into this world he brought light not physical light only but spiritual light and so we need to understand that God is truly light in our darkness. We see, as I said before, the demonstration of God operating as way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness in these verses. It's not 
or should not just be a song. It should be a reality of who God is in our life. We should stop singing these songs if we don't believe in them, if we don't know the reality behind them, stop singing them. They're not just for us to talk, they're for us to live. God was demonstrating to his children here in Exodus 14 that yes, when I say something, I mean it. When I say I'm a miracle worker, I mean it. When I say I'm a way maker, I mean it. When I say I'm a light in your darkness, I mean it. And we're seeing it here live and direct today. In order for God to be way maker, our situation must be impossible. That's why he led them to that impossible place so that they can understand it's not about them, it's about him. It's not about their glory, it's about his glory. It's not for people to praise them, but people to praise him. Too many of us are looking for praise, and guess what? If God had taken them through the short way, they probably would have gotten through and think that, listen, this is what we did. That's why God has to put some of us to the test that he wants to show us that he is God all by himself. That dead end situation was to teach the children of Israel that listen, I am God and I am God simply all by myself. I don't necessarily need you to come and tell me uh, what it is. Verse 21 demonstrate all three things as I said, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, you name it. Now what we're going to do is to look at some things here. The sea go back or receding, making a way where it would have been impossible to pass. Let's look at another situation and let's look at an example of God being a way maker. Now Paul and Silas was preaching the gospel in the book of Acts chapter 16 and they took them beat them and place them in stock in the middle of the prison surrounded by guards and Paul and Silas was in prison and at midnight while they were singing God shook the foundation of the prison walls that Paul and Silas were unlocked the doors opening by themselves the chain fell off without keys that had them bound and he freed them when they could not have freed themselves you want to know if god really is a miracle worker you want to know if he's a way maker listen they placed paul and silas there to deal with them the next morning but they had one plan god has another don't care how much people are planning for your life. God is going to make a way. Don't care what they're planning to do. And don't care how they have all their plans set. Set all their guards in place. Set everything that they want to set in place. They can do that. But I can promise you that God will demonstrate to you that he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in your darkness. Look at this. Look at the time. At midnight, the Bible said they began to sing. And without keys, without a gun or bomb, the whole foundation of the prison shook. The chains came off and they walked out without having to do anything to unlock or open the prison door. He revealed his glory and majesty to protect his faithful servant. That is exactly who God is. It was a miracle because no one could have done that but God. For the sea to recede and the seabed to be dry at the same time, it's a miracle. No sea can be parted and the seabed become dry at the same time. That's impossible. But with man, that is impossible. With God, that is very, very possible. Let's look at what Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, reading from the NLT. And listen to what it says. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness 
I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. That is not impossible with God. That is very possible with God. But that would be impossible for a man to do. God is saying, hey, whatever situation you're in, you're a child of God. And financially, everything seems to just dry up. God is saying, I'm about to show you that I'm your way maker. I'm going to show you that I am your miracle worker. Your tenant is, up, your, your landlord is about to throw you out. Don't worry. God is showing you. God is bringing you to the place that, listen, your stone broke. You don't have any more. Yes, you, you might be high out, strung out on your drug right now. And you're thinking, listen, this is the last. I'm going to die. God is going to show you that he's truly a way maker and a miracle worker. When everybody thinks that you're not going to make it, God is about to demonstrate to you that he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. And he's going to show you the light for you to come out of your darkness. Listen to, listen to what he says. I'm just reading the last portion. Listen to what he says. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Yes, your finances might be dried up, but God's finance never dry up. Yes, your situation might be of such that it's your last piece of whatever drug you're on. And you, you feel that, listen, this is the last of it. I'm going to take it and die. Let me say this to you. You're not going to die. God is going to make a way for you to get out of it. If he has to send someone, or even when you take it, he sends an angel to protect you. God is still a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Don't give up. In verse 16, God promised in verse 16, they would cross on dry land, and they did. We know that God keeps his promises. I can tell you that. I can speak about it personally because he has done it for me. You need to have your experience. You need to have your own testimony. And it's only when God leads us to dead ends that we know that he's truly a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. He's a miracle worker. Let's look at something else. According to Joshua chapter 23 and verse 14, this is what it says. Not one word has failed of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you. Now, I don't mind how much money I have in the bank or you have in the bank. But when you have a promise like this, that everything that a, person's, a person promised you comes to pass, you want a better person in your life than this? This is what he's saying to Joshua. This is what I said. Not one word has failed of all the good things. Notice, of all the good things that the Lord your God promised concerning you, not one of them has failed. And it is a fact. Every good thing that God has promised his children, God has come true for them. He says, all my promises are yea and amen, which means when I say it, it cannot change. God cannot say yes and no at the same time. If he says yes, it's yes, and if he says no, it is no. If he says wait, then it's simply wait. And so he's saying that everything that I promise you, you can cling to them because I promise them to you, and no man or no woman can change them. Now, as we look at the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, what we see, and I'm going to name seven of them this morning, just for you to notice that God is a promise keeper. We see already he's a way maker. We see already he's a miracle worker. We see already that he's light in the darkness. But let's look at some of the promises that he has made so that those of you who are wondering, and I keep addressing basically people who are saved, but I want you to know, yes, you, you might not be saved today, but you are at a dead end. You're in a place that 
You just basically cannot see a way out. You're actually saying, listen, a lot of people see me smiling. They see me look happy, well-dressed, going to my big house, or, or they, they see me around town and, uh, you know, I, I drive maybe the latest, or, you know, they, they, they see me and, um, you know, this is my, and they don't know. Let me say this to you. Today can be your day for God to prove to you that he's a miracle worker. Today can be your day when he can prove to you that he is a light in the darkness. Some people don't know what you're going through, but you know what you're going through and God knows what you're going through. God wants to be your light in the darkness, just as he did for the children of Israel. He wants to do the same for you. Now, let's look at some of the promises and I'm going to mention seven of them. There are more, but I want to mention these seven because I think that these are the most pertinent that you, we should pay attention to. The seven promises of God, I will be with you. If it is one thing, and we can see all of these coming out in the Exodus from uh, Egypt to the land that God has promised. He says, I'll be with you. And notice how God stayed with them. He was a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. And he says he will never stop being with them in verse 22 until they get to where they're supposed to get to. And even when they were there, God was still with them. Listen, I will be with you. Isaiah 43 verse 2 said, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. He actually demonstrated that to the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Who, who else in the world could promise you something like this and actually keeps it? Nobody else. Only God can make these promises and keep them. Notice, when you pass through the waters, when they pass through the river Jordan, he was with them. I'll be with you when you pass through the rivers and they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, that terrible situation, you will not be burned. It will not consume you. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now the other thing that we see coming out of this same story with the children of Israel, God says, I will protect you. Psalm 23 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your authority, which is the staff, bring comfort to me. Knowing that you are in charge of me, God, that brings comfort to me. The children of Israel were comforted that they have a God who doesn't sleep or slumber. So in the day, pillar of cloud. In the night, pillar of fire. And every day for the rest of their lives, these children of Israel had God's protection about them. You know what a lot of people don't understand? You see the desert? In the day, the desert is pretty hot. And I'm going to show you how God protected them. That cloud that led the children of Israel in the day, if it was not there, they would have been consumed with the heat. A lot of people don't recognize that. That cloud covered them or as the desert heat would have consumed them. Let me show you another thing. In the night, the desert is pretty cold. Guess what God did? He was a pillar of fire in the night, which granted warmth to the children of Israel. He will protect you. When God says, I will protect you, he means it. He's not just saying word. He told them that he will be with them. And he demonstrated that by being a pillar of cloud in the day to protect them from the, um, the heat of the desert and a pillar of fire by night because they needed the heat because in the night, the desert can become very cold. That's number two. Number three, he says, I will be your strength. Now, I want you to notice how many times that 
God actually said to, to Moses, tell them I said to move on. And each time God says, I will fight for you. I will be your strength. Moses tell them, listen, yeah, stand still. N don't do anything. Just stay calm. Just be silent and watch God deliver you. We see that God in our situation will be our strength. He will become our miracle worker. He will keep his promise to us every time by being our strength. Isaiah 40, 29, he gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak. Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You notice, those of us who put our trust in God, God will renew our strength. They will soar up on wings like eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Let me say this to you. God cannot lie. He will keep his word. He says, I will answer you. Notice this. In, in, in chapter 13, when the children of Israel called out to God, God heard them and answered them. In Jeremiah 33, 3, a very familiar passage of scripture, this is what he says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and tell you, and even show you great and mighty things, things which you have not been confined, that you have been confined and hidden which you do not know and understand and cannot distinguish. Let me tell you, God will stick to his word. Let me give you another. I will provide for you. Can you imagine providing for one point something million people in a desert? God took care of one point something million people in a desert providing water, food and all the necessities that they needed my goodness jeremiah 29 11 for i know the plans i have for you this is what god is saying to those of us who are his children declare the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future god had a hope and a future for the children of israel just as for us as believers today he has a hope and a plan for us you can't miss out on God. When God promises something, he will bring it to pass. I will give you peace, Philippians 4 verse 9. He says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. You want any better promises than that? The last one, I will always love you. Romans 8 verse Verses 38 and 39, NLT. And I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither fear for today or nor worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. I want to close with this this morning. God can help you regardless of your situation. Is it drugs? Is it alcohol? Is it sickness? Is your life right now at a dead end? God can become your way maker. He can become your miracle worker. He already, he already promised to take care of you. He's willing to show you what other people can't see. But you must allow him to lead you. I want you to know. This message was specifically sent for you. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your situation is. But this message was specifically for you. You might be rich and a lot of people don't know what you're going through. You might be poor and everybody knows what you're going through. You might be um, um, mid-status in society and a lot of people don't know what is happening behind the scene. God knows. You might be a believer and your situation is dire. I want to encourage you and let you know that God is your way maker. God is your miracle worker. God is your promise keeper. God is your light in the darkness. That is who he is. And all God is asking you to do today 
is not to go borrow no money. Not to go and get more help and dig yourself further into a ditch. All that God is asking you to do today is to call out to him. When you call him, let him lead you. He is about to deliver you out of your dead-end situation. It might be a dead-end relationship with a man or woman. It might be a dead-end situation in a job situation. It might be a dead-end situation uh, where, where your life is concerned. It might be financial, but I'm telling you this morning, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the darkness, that is who God is. God bless you. I hope that those of you who are listening this morning and are in one of these situations, that you will allow Jesus Christ to become the Lord and Master of your life. I love you, but God loves you more. And if you love yourself, you will allow God to bring you out of the situation that you are in. God bless you. Have a good morning. Thank you for listening to Focusing on God's Word with Pastor Everton Jeffers, a Bible-based study revealing the Word of God. You can follow Pastor Jeffers on God's First Radio at 102.9 FM from 1 p.m. each Sunday or on Abundant Life Radio at 103.9 FM. You can also follow him on Facebook or the YouTube channel. Thank you once again for listening to Focusing on God's Word. May God continue to bless you.